Right, so we are going to show the process to export a structural model from Stat to Adena, where we are going to perform a nonlinear dynamic blast analysis for a building structure like the one you see on the screen. We will be looking at a scenario like this, in which the detonation happens at a distance from the external facade of the building. This will be a nonlinear time history analysis with material nonlinearity. And we will assume that we have calculated the blast pressures acting um, on that facade using an appropriate calculation or code of design. We will also assume that we have our blast pressures acting on a specific facade, even though we can, of course, in Adena have as many different blast pressures as required, and this can be applied to as many locations as we need. Because we have also constant gravity loads acting on the structure, we will have an initial static analysis and then we will switch to a dynamic analysis where we have the blast pressures acting together with these gravity loads. So this is my building structure in Stat Pro. If I look at geometry, we can see that we have split, we have divided the columns into a number of elements so we can better capture the nonlinear effects. And if I look at my loading, I see that I have in this model the loads that I require for my blast analysis. So I have the self weight of the structure. I have a superimposed load, quite heavy applied to the different slabs on the structure. And I have my blast pressures, which, as I said before, I'm going to assume they act only at these three columns here on this facade. I can navigate now to File, Import, Export, and here I have the ability to export the model to well, as an Adina input file. I'm going to change the vertical axis to Z in Adina. And now on version 2024 of Stat Pro, I have the option to choose between multiple load cases or time functions. So in this case, I'm going to select time functions, and this means that each of these load cases will be exported to Adena within a different time function. So this will allow me to control the fact that the dead loads, for instance, the self weight of the structure, as well as the superimposed dead loads, they're applied, um, or they have a time function which is constant. They are applied constantly throughout the time. However, the blast pressure will be something which is more high intensity, short duration, dynamic type of load. So I'm going to click OK. That has created my input file. So I'm now going to Adina. And here from File, Open Batch, I'm going to locate the, um, the input file that I have just exported from Stat Pro. And this is my building structure with um, all the loading applied. And of course, well, materials, cross sections, supports, and so on. Now we just need to go through a series of steps before we can run the nonlinear analysis. So before anything else, I want to run a dynamic analysis, but we said we were going to start with a static analysis first and then switch to a dynamic analysis. And this is going to happen at specific time steps. So from time equal one seconds Onwards, this is going to be dynamic. Before that, it's going to be static. So click OK. Now here, if we navigate through control to time steps, the first time step is the one that will be static. And then we decide to have, in this case, 2,400 time steps of 0 0.25 milliseconds each. That will take us to, to a total solution time of 1.6 seconds. So time step one will be static and then and of course, with the structure under gravity loads, and then between 1 and 1.6, we will run our blast analysis. We click OK. And if we navigate once again to control, now we look at the time functions. As we were expecting, we have three, one for the self-weight, one for the superimposed load, 
and one for the blast pressures. By default, all these time functions are imported as a constant and time function that whose value is one between zero and a very large time. So this is appropriate for gravity static loads acting on the structure all the time. And now what we have to do is switch or change the time function number three to something which is representative of the blast pressures. So this is the time function that we are going to export from Excel into Adena. So I can navigate here to import. We're going to look for a CSV file and we need to locate that CSV file. Open. And that has imported exactly that curve that we are interested in. So we can click Save and OK. And that's it. So we are almost there, but we need to, well, first of all, come come once again to, for the last time, to analysis assumptions, kinematics, and we're going to invoke large displacements. And the very last thing that we need to do is to assign some nonlinear material or plasticity to the columns so we, we see them fail and backward. So I'm going to switch off the loading. And we see here on our um, model structure that we have series of element groups. Yeah, this is the one that is associated to the columns. So every cross section in material was stored here as a different element group, which means that we have our columns here under our first element group. If we look at the materials, we see that we also have steel, elastic steel applied to all beams and columns, and we have concrete applied to the walls and the slabs. So I need to define a new material that will be the plasticity material for the columns. We're going to do that through model, materials, manage material list. And we're going to define a simple bilinear plastic material model. We're going to add a new material. Let's call this plastic steel, a Young's modulus of, let's assume, 205 gigapascals, because we are working in kilonewtons. This would be E6, Poisson's ratio of steel, we can assume to be 0 0.3. And the initial yield stress, let's assume this is 275 megapascals, which again, because we are working in kilonewtons, is 275.3. We need the material density, which we can assume to be around 8,850 kilograms per cubic meter, or let's put 7.85 tons per cubic meter because again we are working in kilonewtons and a strain hardened modulus of let's assume a 205.3. We click OK, we close the screen, and now we come here to our the columns group. We modify this and change the material to number three. So finally we come to solution, data file run. And we cancel the analysis. So we have fast forwarded a little bit, but we can say that analysis is taking just under 12 minutes to solve. So we can now close the screens and switch to the post processing mode where we can explore the results. To do that, as usual, we navigate to file, open, we identify the porthole file that we are interested in, and we double click or click on open, and that's going to load my results. So let's go back to time step number one. Let's, let's change the some aspects of the visualization of the structure for better clarity. I would like to see the thickness of those elements in this particular case. So we are at time step number one. If I apply a magnification factor to the displacements automatically, we see how the structure is reacting, is responding to the vertical weight, to the self-weight and the superimposed loads, vertically and statically. If we switch to magnification off, and we now start 
looking at subsequent time steps, we navigate through those time steps. So we're at time one, we can uh, move on to the next time steps. And we see that the first columns to react are the ones where we had the blast load applied. And we're going to see how the next um, column rows continue to, to react and buckle due to the additional or excessive weight of the structure. One particular result of interest when it comes to blast is the ductility or the accumulated plastic strain, as well as the rotations and displacements that the key structural elements undergo. So one thing that we can display is, uh, we can display is the strains, accumulated effective plastic strains. So in this case, we are looking at the plastic strains, which are accumulated from one time step to the next one, so across time steps. And we can see how we have maximum levels of plasticity as one might expect at the, um, the ends of the columns as well as the middle. That's where the plastic hinges tend to form when we have events like this. And of course, we might be interested to look at the displacements and the rotations at the different nodes of the structure. So if we are, for instance, interested in the midspan of that column, one thing we could do is go to definitions, model point, here nodes. We're going to have to display the visualization of those nodes. And then we can start to define our uh, model points. So we can call this one column one middle, click OK, and we select that particular node there, click OK. Let's move this aside a moment. And here on list, go to value list, model point. We have the column one middle that we've just defined, and here we can list any particular result component. So I was talking about X displacement, which is in the direction of the of the blast, and also the rotation about Y, which is the perpendicular one. So we could select those two, rotation in Y, apply, and add a nice listing for us those results that I can of course export um, in a table format. We could directly export this table to Excel spreadsheet uh, type of format if we're interested to do that. We can, of course, as well uh, graph those results components. So in this particular case, I'm coming here to graph, response curve, model point. Um, in this case, I only have column one middle, but I could have others as well. And I'm going, for instance, to look at the um, X displacement, or I could look at the Y rotation as well in a similar fashion as I've done before. So Y rotation, Click OK, and that is our, our graph. This is entirely consistent with a list of numbers that I've just exported before. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.